Cool. First of all, thank you for joining. It's 255 on a Friday, last day of KubeCon, and we have a great turnout over here. So thank you so very much for making it to this panel discussion. Um, this is going to so we're going to talk about how tags in TOC keep cloud native running. Uh, the context over here is this is not a maintainer track session. This is not a tag specific session. This is not a TOC specific session. But this is more of a discussion to see how tags in TOC kind of works together. So that's kind of gap we saw. And then we thought of putting this panel discussion together. So I am going to moderate this. I'm Rajas. I am one of the tech leads for Tag Runtime. And I work at Broadcom doing all things Kubernetes there. I have an interesting lineup of panelists over here today, so I would let them introduce themselves. Marina, you want to take over? Sure. Hi, I'm Marina. Um, I'm a security researcher at a company called Adara, and also one of the co-chairs of Tag Security. Hi, I'm Ricardo Aravina, and I'm one of the co-chairs for Tag Runtime. I'm also a lead for the Cloud Native AI Working Group, and I work at Snowflake uh, doing infra things in Kubernetes. Hello, my name is Alex Kirkop. I'm the co-chair of Tag Storage, and I'm also the chief architect for Akamai's Cloud. And hi, I'm Karina Angel, and I was a tech lead in Tag App Delivery, and now I'm on the TOC. Thank you so much for joining this panel. And to kick things off, um, some of you have been on these tags since Epoch 1 or Epoch 0. So if you could just briefly walk us through how your experience has been like through tags, how it got started, that'd be really great. Yeah. Sure. So a long, long, long time ago, before six and tags, we had some working groups. And they were mostly organically grown things where a bunch of contributors and a bunch of people in the community got together to try and agree stuff like what's serverless or what's cloud native storage. Um, and I, if I remember rightly, in Seattle in 2018, KubeCon, a bunch of us got together and started putting, jotting down some notes around the framework for what um, was eventually called the SIG, would be, would be how it would work. So that was people like Quinton Hull and Alexis Richardson, Erin Boyd, uh, myself, I helped contribute there too, and a bunch of others. Um, and we put in some structure, we wrote the first mission and charter. And then in Barcelona, um, I, rem <laughs> I remember walking to KubeCon from my hotel room and I had a talk about the storage working group. And I got a phone call from Chris Anacek saying, oh, hey, the CNCF has actually like approved the SIGs. So I was on stage in Barcelona about to do my presentation and updating the slides live on stage and was really happy to announce the first uh, SIG, which was the, the storage SIG, um, and I believe the security sig was like a day later, um, and then the and then we started working. There was um, sort of a, quite a growth of of different um, sigs that that sprung up once we had like a, a method of formalizing them. Um, and in early 2021, we had a, a bit of a discussion to figure out how we avoid confusion between the Kubernetes SIGs and the CNCF SIGs. And we kind of said, OK, what are the tags actually doing? And what we're really doing was advising the TOC and, and sort of providing that subject matter expertise. So that's when we decided to, to you know, change it from SIGs to tags. And this is where we are now. Perfect. Yeah, I came a little bit later uh, around 2019, uh, so the SIG security and uh, SIG stories was, uh, were already created, and the TOC was actually talking about creating additional SIGs, and the next one in line was uh, SIG runtime, and I had 
attending some of the TOC meetings. I also had some conversations with some of the early SIG creators. And I decided to just start joining more of the TOC meetings and, and, and find my way to, to become a co-chair. So eventually I did become a co-chair and I've been a co-chair ever since. Uh, so prior to that, I, I, my involvement with the CNCF was mostly around having a talk at KubeCon. I remember I had a, a talk at KubeCon in Copenhagen, uh, and that's kind of like what kicked off most things for me. And and I started meeting more people and getting more involved. And and yeah, and this this is uh, the current state. Uh, and, and now we, we've grown quite a bit. Uh, like you know, six became tax and tag runtime. Um, you know, reached out to so many different people and projects, and that allowed the uh, working group creation. So right now, I think we have about six working groups uh, that are sort of like within the scope of the tag runtime, and it, it continues to grow. Perfect. Marina or Karina, do you want to go next on how you started and how it's evolved? Okay, yeah, so I can talk a little bit about this. I've been involved in tag security, um, not since its creation, so I have a little bit less context than these folks. But um, I joined the group about um, five years ago. I started kind of showing up to meetings, contributing a little bit. Um, became a tech lead, I think it was three years, two, three years ago now, something like that. And then um, only last year became a co-chair of the, of the tag, so. Um, I'm trying to remember how long I've been involved. Um, at least in tag app delivery, I've been involved at least three or four years. Um, and really, I wanted to understand how it fit into the ecosystem. I mean, we are talking about how we keep cloud native running, right? And uh, one of, um, I was a product manager at Red Hat, and one of the things that I did um, actually, at the time I joined, I was the product manager for Helm on OpenShift at the time. And I said, huh, where's the, where's the best place to go to learn more about applications, right, on cloud native? And so I said, well, that makes sense, the technical advisory group, app delivery. Um, and from there, I just stayed involved because it's a great community. And um, yeah. Awesome. So I, th I think we've got stories from like how it started and like how it's been evolved and, you know, since when we got involved and things like that. So at this point, maybe let's spend like a couple of minutes, like, you know, just to uh, double click on the aspect of when a project enters the CNCF landscape and goes from sandbox to incubation to graduation, at each of these stages, like if you could define what role a particular tag plays with TOC, in this journey of the project, that'd be great. Like, you know, just you can spend some time on that. I can, I can start with a little bit from the from the tag security side and then you can hear more. Um, so from the tag security side, there's a couple of main ways we interact with projects, like directly. We have a lot of kind of general guidance and stuff like that. But the, the direct um, interaction is in the form of self-assessments and joint assessments. So self-assessments, I think, are required starting at the incubating level, I believe, um, and definitely required for graduation. Um, and anyone can do them. It's the idea is that you, it's like a, a whole format and th that we've worked through as a tag for projects to really look at, you know, what their assets are, what are their security risks, and kind of think through these things. It's not a security audit. It's more of like a, um, a holistic view of the security of a project. Um, and that, that's, the self-assessment is done, as, as the name implies, by the project themselves. Um, and then, kind of as projects mature, often um, as part of graduation, um, projects will do joint assessments, where um, members of the tag actually sit down with maintainers of the project or like a security liaison from the project and walk through that self-assessment and like ask questions and learn more about the, the project and then make recommendations or like observations about um, some of that security posture from there. Um, yeah. Yeah, from Tag Runtime's point of view, uh, uh, you know, sandbox projects uh, typically present in the tag. We sometimes we reach out to them, uh, so the bar for a sandbox is not super high. So we just it, it's kind of informal. Uh, it gets a little bit more formal when the projects try to go to incubation. So we we have another more formal presentation. In which we ask them about community and how how they're growing. So we're gonna want to see maybe the projects in sort of a growth trajectory and having 
some end users. Uh, yeah, so in, 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 and then we continue helping the project with the due diligence and start creating a due diligence document and getting engaged with TOC members and you know, let it out or in, in, in the open so that TOC members are aware that this project is actually looking for a sponsor uh, to get incubated. And then later for graduated product projects, it's kind of similar. They have a, a presentation. Is, uh, some of this is managed by the CNCF projects in the GitHub organization. And, and they get scheduled in, in our meetings. And we have like open meeting notes and they can just go ahead and, and add the, the presentation to the agenda. And if you have any, any questions, we we actually, most of the times we answer these on Slack and, and we just let the project maintainers know that we're just here to help. Um, wh one thing I will say is, I think over the last five years we've seen actually sort of a fair few changes to the process and the way we onboard um, projects into the CNCF. But I think throughout it all, the tags um, are there to help with the community, help understand the project, provide some guidance to the project, um, and in many cases take a very active role in the due diligence process during incubation and, and, and graduation, you know, whether that's actually assessing aspects of the architecture or, or say talking to end users to you know figure out um, what the production use cases are um, and you know I think the tags also have an informal role where they can advocate for uh, projects and and kind of maybe mediate uh, problems in projects where there might be you know issues with say governance or issues with licensing and things like that and they need like some technical expertise in that space although of course the CNCF um, does have a lot of support in terms of you know uh, legal and, and IP policies and things like that but uh, but the tags I, I kind of feel like the tags have the official purpose of the tags is to help scale and, and help deal with the workload but also as kind of a bit of a glue to, to glue the process and the technology together So, who here has been through the matriculation process? Have you been in a project that, I know it's Friday afternoon, right? <laughs> um, I see some of you that I know have gone through this, so let me ask this again. Who here has gone through the matriculation process? Sandbox, incubation? graduation? Do you have one that you're hoping to go through? Ah, okay. <laughs> I see more hands too. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and apologize. We're all like low energy, I feel like, right? I'm going to make you stand up and do jumping jacks or something. <laughs> or dance, Alex. <laughs> um, so as from the TOC's perspective, and there's other TOC members here, so they're always welcome to come up and chime in. Um, what really helps, so we have changed our processes a bit and made them more clear, added criteria, and uh, Marina mentioned the uh, security self-assessments and the joint self-assessments. Um, so the self-assessment is required. Um, for some certain levels, and it's actually incredibly helpful um, when we're looking through it. So just a reminder for everybody, uh, the processes are not a checkbox. This isn't a paper exercise. We actually dig in and do a due diligence on projects because end users, other adopters, people in the ecosystem really are relying on your projects. Um, so it's really important. So when we say that we rely on the tag expertise, you know, the TOC relies on it, it, it's actually, it's a big deal. So your expertise and your domains in the community, getting involved in these domain areas, super helpful, super important, um, because we can't all do it alone, right? We're all better together. Um, so the self-assessments, uh, for Sandbox, uh, 
we some members of the tags will come in and do a great assessment on a project and where it fits in, where the gaps are. So that's incredibly helpful as well. Um, I, I can keep going forever, but I think yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with this, right? Like we've talked about like the security assessments, like how tags play a role of advocacy or like the due diligence and like, you know, helping with the expertise and everything. So Kubernetes turned 10 years, CNCF is like turning nine years. And at this juncture, like where we're talking about like the advisory groups, um, from a leadership perspective, like what does this mean? So what I'm trying to uh, talk about is when we talk about a particular project, that project's roadmap is controlled by the maintainers. That project's journey is some way or the other in the ecosystem controlled by the TOC. So how do we make the leaders of a particular tag more empowered, right? So that, that their expertise is like heard even more. I'm talking about like, you know, plus one binding vote for tag members or tag leaders on at least say sandbox applications. Like this has been like coming up in the community every now and then. So what do you all think about that? Like how do we empower tag leaders? So, so, so I, I have a strong opinion on this. Please most, go ahead. <laughs> mo most, mostly because I wrote the rules on this in the charter. Um, and when we were putting the tags together, we specifically didn't want to obliterate anything uh, in the mission or you know the, the the operating board of the CNCF, and therefore we didn't want to change the decision making process. So the TOC always retained 100% of the decision making process, and the tags had an advisory role. Um, so I'm not entirely sure we want the tags to um, obfuscate or, 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 or add ambiguity in that space. However, that said, informally, I think we already, I think the tags already have a lot of that functionality in the sense that, um, you know, tags are involved in all of the TOC processes. We're invited to the sandbox uh, reviews um, and we're always asked for opinions. So, um, and I've never, come across a case where, you know, an opinion was just completely ignored. So so whilst we don't have a direct decision making process, we certainly are uh, influencing the process. Yeah, I, I have a follow up to that. But like before I do that, like I, I would give a chance to anyone else to if you want to jump in. Yeah, I agree. And I think I'll add that I think this this model helps tags um, kind of jump in on projects that match their expertise. Because um, like, you know, there's some sandbox projects that are maybe more applicable to security. And so folks in our group can give opinions on those projects without having to kind of keep up with every single sandbox ap application as closely to kind of provide that guidance. Yeah, th I think the tags um, have more of the expertise in the different fields. I, mean, I think you, um, my, in my opinion, I'm open to change. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So if the if the tags actually have maybe a little bit of more decision power because they know the technical aspects of that specific field, right? So runtime, they know, you know, what goes underneath, what I don't know, device drivers uh, you need to support, uh, what uh, C groups, you, you know, what, what specific feature of C groups you need to support. So, so they're deeper into that in that space. So they they can. I feel like they, they can actually make a, a lot of decisions because if a, a lot of these things actually get passed to to what the TOC is now, um, to me, kind of may feel a little bit like they're just kind of rubber stamping. They're just doing like plus one, plus one because it's the tag did it right. So, so I'm just uh, uh, personally, I'm, I'm just kind of open to to change and, and I, I mean the. the Ecosystem has actually changed over the years, so I don't, I don't see why that, your, that your wouldn't be the case in, in the future. Yeah, yeah so changing the ethos on which it was built yeah. and things like that. Karina, do you want to jump in with the TOC perspective? No. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So my follow-up basically to uh, what Alex said was more in terms of what incentive do the tag leaders see then from an indirect influencing perspective vis-a-vis -vis how do they convince their employers for them to continue doing this work if they do not have direct 
influence of power. I mean, I know it's getting a little spicy for the Friday evening. Sure. Let's kind of talk. I, I, so, so I mean, that, that's that's a good question. It's like, why why does anybody you know work on open source and contribute? Like everybody in the tags and everybody in the TOC, um, and and every maintainer is is often uh, doing this in their spare time, and this is not their day job, right? So, um, I think. Contributing in the community, you know, from a personal perspective, for example, working with, you know, clever people in the community and finding out new stuff is, is a big appeal for me. Um, being able to help shape and provide opinions and, and, and to be honest, you know, work with the great people who are on the TOC anyway um, is, is, uh, is quite important for me too. There is a balance. I, 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 I would I would acknowledge that, you know, we could um, we could look to, to formalize some of these things. But it's it's also important not to have to sort of change the entire structure of the boards and things like that. You know, we we benefit from having a certain level um, a, a certain mix of formality and informality. And if the tags were given plus one capabilities and actually making those decisions, it would also create a formality burden, which I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure everybody wants to take on. I think Marina, you also had the yeah, hand up. And then Karina, you can go next. Yeah, just as far as um, like, you know, why, why people become leadership in tags um, and how the, the justifying it. And I think for me, it's kind of two sides. There's the kind of, you know, personal and career growth aspect where you can learn from a lot of really smart, amazing people um, in, in your field of interest, um, which is really cool. Um, and there's the other part, which is just kind of influencing, you know, best practices in the space, um, learning about the projects as they come out and, you know, seeing them early and seeing how you can kind of work with them, both as a member of the tag, but also kind of outside of that, that role. Um, and contributing to some of like the white papers and best practices in this space can be really valuable. Some of the white papers we have in tag security have been referenced in like government regulations and in other spaces, and it's really kind of shaping how the industry looks at these problems. And I think that's actually, even though it's like, it's not we don't have an official like vote or anything. There's a the real power to that, to like bringing those ideas together and presenting them. Yeah. Just one thing I'd like to add. I think, you know, certainly on a personal level, I'm very invested in the fact that. You know, cloud native needs to be work. Like most of the careers of people in this room are going to be based on cloud native being successful, and that ultimately is the mission of the CNCF, right? We we want cloud native to be ubiquitous, um, and certainly throughout the years that I've sort of worked with projects and things like that, we, we've certainly made mistakes. We've certainly iterated. We've certainly learned. You know the. There are there are things which which happened sort of in the early days of the CNCF where, where we kind of realized oh okay now next time we're going to tweak things and we've learned from those things and we know to look for them and that also makes the cloud native sort of environment and the ecosystem healthier which really benefits us all. Uh, Karina, I think you also had a yeah. thing to add. Um. So I, I know I'm lucky. I work for an employer that gives me um, a certain percentage of time to work upstream. Um, ultimately, a lot of us um, work on projects and solutions that as we're contributing and getting involved together, we move faster together, uh, regardless you know, what you're working on. If we're all working together, um, this is tech. Tech moves so fast, and if we're not doing it together, then you know, it doesn't we're going to slow down considerably. So, as far as what we're all working on in our separate areas, yeah, I mean, I mean, all of us. I, I look at the panel, and all of us have you know could make a good uh, argument for why we're up here and why we're doing what we're doing to our employers. Exactly. I mean, if you take a step back and look at the 30,000 foot view, you know, tags, working groups, people in the community that are working with those groups, 
have created entirely new techn technology areas, you know, whether it's, you know, you kind of go back in time in Kubecrons and maybe one year it was all about service meshes and the next year it was all about serverless and the next year it was all about Wasm or whatever, you know, and, and we've effectively defined entire product categories, you know, created funding opportunities for startups, you know, created whole new projects. That's that's what we're here facilitating. I know, and I think these are good um, inspiring success stories, like especially white papers from tax security being, you know, used by government reg regulations or making cloud native ubiquitous together and like all of us collaborating together. This kind of makes it a um, convincing argument for people to join as well for their personal growth as well as for, you know, companies to sponsor their employees to work on these kind of things. And um, I think we'll, we'll leave some time for Q&A as well so people can, you know, we can make it more interactive and like folks can add their thoughts as well. But before we do that, um, kind of shifting gears, off late, there has been like a general perception that there has been like a lot of process-oriented tasks that the tags go through instead of a lot of technical tasks. But do you see this changing? Do you, how do you see your tags charter evolving or how do you see your contract with the TOC evolving over the next decade or so? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, the, it's, it's going to be different. Uh, th there will be some changes it, and I think it uh, makes sense from the point of view of evolving technology. Uh, technology technology changes really fast, like Karina was saying that, that, you know, like maybe, I don't know, three or four months later, we're talking about different things. So we have to kind of like stay up to date. So to me, it's just like kind of being open about all these different changes, maybe aligning all this different technical expert uh, expertise across the different tags in, in, in different segments. That, that are more relevant to today's world. Um, of course, uh, I think the AI hype cannot actually be ignored. Uh, so this is something that we have to keep into account as we go forward. Uh, so how we run AI type of workloads on top of cloud native and how we use AI uh, to improve the usage of cloud native systems, whether it is runtime, storage, applications, uh, troubleshooting. So there's so many things that you can think of that you can use AI because it just applies to any vertical. Then, So we, we just have to, to stay relevant and, and, and I'm pretty open and I see that that's going to continue to evolve. So change is constant and rate of change is accelerating. Um, and Throughout IT, we've seen like big cataclysmic changes, right? Where, for example, we had the dot com boom and bust, which really transformed data centers, where over two years, almost every data center went into Linux. And we had some other catalysts, like, you know, the financial crisis, which really, really pushed everything into um, virtualization. And we had then, you know, containers that then created a whole uh, sphere of orchestration and, and things like that, and, and Kubernetes was born, right? So the, the, the rate of change is ridiculous, and you can kind of see that with the number of projects joining the CNCF. Um, and since the tags were created in you know 2019, if you look at the projects at CNCF.io, the graph is, is doing its hockey stick, right? So. I, I kind of do feel some of the frustration in terms of process um, and and I know that that is a little painful but if we're being fair all of us a year or two ago were sitting together with the TOC and saying guys we really need to be more formalized and more automated so so it's it's kind of you know and and, and honestly I'm thankful to the TOC people like Karina as well, pushing things like DTR, DTR. and things like that are really, really cool exactly. stuff happening. Which, which, which really helps in, in this respect. And, and I think, you know, we, we kind of go through phases where um, 
we'll, we'll, we'll need to define the processes, and then the processes are there, and then we'll get more time back to do other stuff. Um, and, and in terms of how things are going to happen in future, you know, AI is seeing like a ridiculous amount of investment. But I can guarantee you that AI in a few years' time will look nothing like what we have today. And in, in, in fact, you know, I'll make a bold prediction that just like we had the dot-com boom and bust, and we went from data centers full of Sun servers and HP servers and Alpha servers, and we, for two years, it just went poof into, into Linux, I'm predicting the same exact thing is going to happen again. The platforms we have deployed today are probably all going to change in the next three to four years. That's a hard take. <laughs> Any other parting thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I was going to mention, so if we don't identify the processes, we can't automate them away, right? And so that's what we've really been trying to hard to do. And uh, that's why we have people like Bob here, because <laughs> he can help us automate everything. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I was just going to say the process is super important as you scale, because if, if you have too many things, it, even not just open source, but any organization as you scale, you need that. Uh, but you just have to balance it out, right? Uh, innovation process, it's all that debate uh, about that, right? So so you just have to keep going and, and find little, maybe little spots here and there so for, for people to innovate, right, what, as, as you grow, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that the um, as, as tag chairs, I think we see a lot of this process, but I think that there's still a lot of great um, work happening by the by the tech leads and the other members of the tag, and so I think that um, as we smooth this out, we'll get to kind of go back to helping them with all of that instead of just helping with process and everything like that. So, yeah, just to end on a positive positive ish note. Yeah, I like that perspective. I mean, I think instead of process, what we really would like to see is uh, all our technical domain experts identifying the gaps in the ecosystem that we can all work on together, and. Uh, really make a difference because we don't want to be bogged down in processes, right? We really want to be working on these technical, yeah. I mean, basically like how, I think this came up in the TOC panel as well, like how projects can interact between themselves in the ecosystem, what is healthy for the ecosystem and things like that. So I think with that, this has been a pleasure talking to all of you. It's been a great, great panel on a Friday evening last day of KubeCon, and I've got a couple of minutes for audience interaction. So folks, the floor is yours if you want to ask any questions, if you have any questions related to tags and TOC. Thank you. G'day. Um, tags are really important. How do each of you look at bringing new members into the tags and making sure that People who have joined know what they're doing and understand what the tag's about and how to help them as best they can. How, how do new members join a tag? Is that the question? How do you help a new member who's joined a tag to get up and running in the tag? Oh, okay. Helping new contributors in a tag. So, I mean, what I'd recommend is that everybody starts by just participating and kind of finding a natural fit. We do have um, tech leads and chairs that sort of share administrative and sort of technical functions, um, but uh, as, as you know, exactly, we have we, we, we do have we do we do have that that sort of guidance in place, and and we do help uh, guide people. And and once you start participating, I think um, contributors automatically kind of find a bit of a niche, and and, and that sort of helps with sort of whether they move up to, you know, being a full-time contributor or, or just helping with, you know, things like white papers or, or, or participating in working groups. So, th so there are a variety of ways to, to, uh, to sort of take on a, a role in, in a tag. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be sort of um, a very complex process. You can, you can start by just participating and asking questions when projects are presenting, for example. Absolutely, and I think you can also pick like a tag that you have kind of interest in and then dig deeper into a particular working group of that tag that you may want to specialize in. And then you can, you know, find your way through that as well. So that can also be a good pointer. But yeah, thanks for the question. I think you also had, do you have another question? Or 
uh, yeah, I want to follow on with it. So I'm from Australia. Um, mm -hmm. The community is pretty small down in Australia, but it's very difficult to get people engaged and involved in anything CNCF related, especially when the time zone is so difficult. So I know the TAG security has now got a, an APAC time zone. I'm part of that, and that's kind of where I'm getting my, my question from about being more involved in it. But I don't see many of the other TAGs doing that same thing and trying to build engagement across different communities. I think it, it varies between different TAGs. Uh, so for example, in TAG Runtime, we have a APAC-friendly uh, meeting, which is most, mostly aligns with, like the, um, I think, China, Eastern time, uh, but I think other tags have different things. Yeah, in tag security, we um, we recently re-picked up our APAC meeting. Um, I think it's been a challenge. I think right now we have a great group, um, re you know, rebooting the APAC tag. I know we had we had a previous iteration that just didn't have enough folks um, participating um, in in that time zone. So um, I guess it, it it has it has to come from both places, right? I think we're definitely open to that participation, but we also need folks in the time zones who are also interested um, in showing up, so. Yeah, and also I think we, we need people to drive uh, whatever that initiative in that time zone, right? So like a champion, right? So, so show up every every meeting, whatever you have, every every bi-weekly, you know, show up there, reach out to different people, different team members in, in that time zone so they can have some some uh, community members join and they can have some some mass. Thank you. You had a question as well. Let me give the mic. Uh, as a, my question is, uh, as a TOC member, how do you balance out being impartial uh, when you take decisions and vote and the interest of your employer, which pays your bills and, of course, they might have some interest uh, or, like, counter-interest in, into your votes? That's mainly my question. Um, so you'll see that um, it's a great question. Uh, TOC members will abstain from a vote if there's a seemingly conflict of interest, even if personally it doesn't feel like it's a conflict of interest. Uh, we very much, it's very important um, for the entire technical oversight committee to remain impartial and um, not have that perception. So it's a great question. Yeah, and I think there there's some guidelines around that, that run that like sort of legal type of things. So the yeah, if you say like you you're part of a company and that company is actually building that open source project and they're going through some incubation, does the TOC member get to do a plus one or not? Right, but yeah. I think we're already over time, but I we can still take some more questions if people have um, anything to bring up. Cool, I think we're good. So from a phone call that you know kind of approved that we can finally go from working groups to SIGs to a proliferated ecosystem, we've come a long way. And thanks for joining the panel. Pleasure talking to you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you.